In this episode, we're going to have a look at our natural buildings, such as our cordwood barn, and we're going to have an update on our sheep. We're going to have a look at some of our reforestation projects. So I hope you enjoy the video, and don't forget to subscribe. So this is our new pig area. We've now got a permanent pig run. We just had piglets. So when I say permanent pig run, we've got a fence going around an acre with an electric fence on the inside. So basically the pigs can't get out um, and there's separate runs inside with electric fencing so we can rotate them. We used to move electric fence through pasture every week or whatever, but that was, that was a hassle. I prefer to have a permanent setup. So they've got, uh, they've got here water a keg out of a nipple, they just squeeze on that and they get clean water and that comes from this pipe which actually comes from our old pig sty which has been converted into a swimming pool or plunge pool. There's cork trees here, these cork trees drop acorns which the pigs love and also this, was, this area was completely uh, overgrown and wild so these guys are actually making it uh, fire safe for us. And just to give you perspective, this is next to the area where we have mimosa forests, which we are working to uh, make into a nice canopy of big mimosa trees using um, sheep. So I'm gonna bring the sheep down here in a bit and show you what I mean by, by that. So once they've, once the sheep have eaten all the mimosa they can reach, they'll climb right up a rock edge, a goat, Get the mimosa even higher up. So a little update at the barn. We've got this lovely little puppy. He's been in training to be a guard dog. Aren't you buddy? Hey! So he's gonna be a livestock guardian to look after the, the sheep. We've done a big clean out in the barn. Uh, so we've got this new section for chickens. So we want the chickens in here so they can pop out and clean up in the barn. Uh, and sometimes we'll open here a little latch and then what's gonna happen, the little lambs can go in and get extra food. It's called a creep feeder. Got a bunch of lambs here, all born from our, uh, from our Suffolk ram, so a meat breed ram. We've got um, a homemade feeder over there for when we put tree here. So trees that we can cut and feed and leave to the sheep and we've got a, a homemade hay feed, feeder there as well. So this is a lovely barn built with natural materials. That's a, a <coughs> that's a Watland door wall there. That one's wood. This is a recycled roof or, or timber from our trees um, and a straw bale wall with the chickens and then we've got a uh, water obviously uh, that's a good big upgrade for us. We used to have to get water from the lake by a bucket. I've now got water here, which is fantastic. And water collection from the roof. We've got a cordwood wall. So this is basically wood and clay with uh, old wine bottles for this wall. So we're nearly finished in here. Um, and we are, I keep the sheep. We've got this lot that are about to have babies. They go into one field. And these guys with the babies are gonna go into another field just so I can keep an eye on the babies, make sure they're okay, make sure our livestock guardian hasn't decided to attack one. Siggy, say hi. Siggy, Siggy, hey Siggy. Come on Siggy. So every day with these sheep, it's a bit of a bit of a work at the moment because I've got to look after this puppy. So he, I've got to train him several times a day, but he'll try and play the sheep, but he's not allowed to do that. So I've got to tie him up, then I've got to open a gate to one field, let the, let the sheep out in that, close the gate, open another gate here. Um, actually there's a new plantation, the Shivani family forest we planted, so you can check out a video on that um, new plantation. But we let the, the babies and the mothers into this one because there's fresher, nicer grass and more legumes. So we do that, plug them in there, clean the barn, grab the puppy, we go for a walk. On the walk uh, I'm clearing stones out the field. It's quite fun. I'm making stone walls, uh, piles of stones, playing different sports <laughs> with stones. Anything I can to keep, get the stones out of the field and have a bit of fun. Um, yeah, we've got 30 sheep at the moment, half of which were born here. And uh, hopefully by next year, all the sheep we have here would have been born here. Um, 
we've got 30 adult sheep now, including Miss Jackson, uh, which is at the front there, who we bottle fed. She lived in our house at the beginning of her life. So she's like a bit of a pet. Uh, hey guys, don't go in the house. Keep going fast. The 18 of these sheep are really old. Like the original sheep we got were really old. Um, the most shepherds get rid of sheep at six years old. These guys are all over 10. But we've got them, they're all pretty healthy now, eating a healthy organic pasture. Yeah, we recently became a licensed organic farm as well. Oh dear. So this is where you make a mistake. So I've got to get them through this gate, but I forgot to open it. And they might leg it the other way. Come on. Hey, come on guys. For us. Anyway, yeah, we've got 13 sheep that are now adults that were born here. The black ones are a um, endangered species. Merino is the best for wool, but it's uh, the wool industry want white wool so they can dye it. Um, and then we've got uh, these white ones that are mixed sort of milk breed. So we also had a, a male Suffolk one, and we're crossbreeding them all, trying to keep the pure uh, merinos. Uh, but also crossbreeding with the Suffolk. So let's get the babies out. Okay, should we go out? Come on, guys. Oh, they're probably checking to see this feed in the feeder. Follow me. Pretty little cute now. This one's about a week old. Go on guys, you know where to go. You were there yesterday. Look at this one, black and white. So three of these lambs, their mothers are actually born here, which is pretty cool. Guys, that way. So it's quite nice to have lambs born from lambs, from mothers that were born here. Let me know it's fully organic. So we're just letting these lambs in to the Shivani family forest. This field's pretty cool because I've done these big swales in it. Can you see these lines? They're like contour lines you see in an ordnance survey map. Basically, there are ditches along the contour and um, when it rains, it's filled up with water and they spread the water along the contour line rather than it running down the hill. So this place is actually getting greener faster along the whole field instead of that just down the middle. Anyway, it's just a good thing. <laughs> Soon enough, these, these, uh, these um, swales will have trees planted along them. All I'm actually trying to do is uh, make a wall. So I'm clearing all the stones from the fields and I'm putting them on contour lines. So as I walk the dog, I just move a few stones each time. And the idea is over a thousand years, as topsoil moves down, wash down here, fills up the mound and it will come up to the top of the wall and start to terrace this field. You know, this land left me people from a thousand years ago, even 2,000 years ago have left me a lot of things on this land for me to enjoy work like this So I'm trying to leave some stuff for people here in a thousand years But one of the things is building terraces by making walls on contour lines um, And Whilst I walk the dog I clear the stones out of the field This field up here before you couldn't see uh, or Couldn't walk through it was just such high uh, two meter high brush I've got a tractor to cut it all but there are so many rocks everywhere it uh, makes it difficult for the tractor that we hire to come through and cut the grass whilst I'm walking the dog uh, I just move stones just to make it easier for the tractor Is that going to last? 
that going to last a thousand years? Probably not. Okay, so just got to keep moving so this dog doesn't get bored. So this is our agroforest. First agroforest we planted. We made a YouTube video update video on that, so you can watch that. I'm not going to talk about that too much, but it's next to this uh, chicken run, chicken compost system, um, and uh, the chicken house, and our reforestation field there. What's quite exciting in the reforestation field, which is five years ago planted or four years ago, we've uh, almost got all the trees big enough to put sheep in. Because when there's no sheep, I've got to cut the grass. So we put fencing around any trees that aren't big enough. Once that fence is up for the chicken, um, for the chicken food forest, we'll let the sheep in. What's very exciting here, in the ag more recent agroforest plantation, we've already got the sheep in. So they're in there doing the work for me. I don't need to uh, cut the grass there, which is fantastic. We might lose, we might lose a few plants, but it's worth it. Um, to have you know the work done for me so I don't have to cut the grass and also get some nice good food for the sheep because this has been rested this field's been rested for two years so there's lots of nice growth there and then on the wetlands field which has been quite good we've got two new plantations that we've done this uh, autumn. We've got a wetland plantation which has lots of ash trees which we've transplanted from a, a friend's farm, Mount of Oaks' farm. We've got alders which we grew and willows and weeping willows. So that's all, that's all further back there in this uh, plantation. And then we've got the Shivani forest. So this is a 38 trees planted just here but it's not quite so wet. And we transplanted some really big olive trees a magnolia I mean look at this ash tree it's about five meters high so that survives but we fence the trees in this field straight away so what we're doing do is use this field for bringing in uh, young lambs um, and mothers keep them near the barn keep them near our guard dog keep them safe so we've done a lot of plantations already this year uh, and we've got quite a lot planned to do in February I'm trying to make videos on each of these for you to watch because there's so much interesting stuff going on um, but you can always come and join one of our food forest courses or permaculture internships if this is something that interests you but it's so nice to walk past trees that you've planted that are as tall as you or taller than you is it ironwood and this one's tree lucerine I got for my birthday two years ago nice fast growing tree um, in inside the chicken run there is a mulberry I grew from a cutting so we're really starting to see trees grow uh, really fast now and hopefully next year we're gonna have lots of fruit we're gonna have lots of new types of birds coming in so we're really looking forward to that So Gone West have delivered these trees here uh, for people to collect. They're giving out free trees around Portugal, so they're using our place as a place for people to come and collect them in this area. And here it was our raspberry trellis. We're going to move that. It's not wet enough here for raspberries. So we're going to move all these raspberries and we're going to make this into a trellis for gojis. So all the gojis are already planted. You can see the leaves are now coming already. So this is going to be goji's all tied up along this trellis so that we can put a nice net over it to protect it from the birds. Um. Thanks very much for watching this update video. Do, uh, do please check out the first part of this uh, video as well and subscribe for future updates from the farm. Thank you very much and take care.